Hello, I'm making this video today about radians for two reasons. One, for students that want to know what a radian actually is. And two, teachers that are looking for an activity to share with their students to allow them to discover what radians are. So this is what I do. I start off with this right here, three circles, each with a radius clearly marked. This is my small circle, my medium circle, and then I have a larger circle right here. And typically I will give this to my students. I'll hand them out to them at their desk and I will give them three cuts of wire. Now the wires match up with the circles like this. So I have a wire right here that, that matches that radius perfectly for the large circle. And the same thing happens for my small, my medium circle. I've got wires that match the radius perfectly. Now, a few other things you could use. Sometimes when I cut these wires, they tend to be a little bit sharp, and I'm always worried that students are going to cut themselves on it by accident. You could use a ribbon if you want to. So ribbon is cheap, and the key thing is you don't want something that is elastic. So I, I don't like to use string here because sometimes string, string can be stretched out or maybe compressed a little bit, and then it doesn't make this activity work. In the description, I will put a link to these worksheets so you don't have to make your own circles. You can just print them off. You will have to cut your own ribbon or wires so that matches. This is speaker wire, so it already has a coating to it. So that kind of keeps us from getting scratched. Now, if you're a teacher wanting to set this up and organize it for year after year use, the way I organize it is I get three bags and I put the medium circle wires in here the large circles in another bag, and then the small circles in a third bag, I found that to be easier than trying to group them small, medium, and large in a bunch of different bags. And then I save the file, and every year I print these out, and they pretty much, it works every year. So what do we do with this activity? Well, I want something to show students what radians are, and radians are really a measure of arc length, and typically when I set this up, I don't tell them that we're finding radian measure. Um, I may or may not in the directions, but usually I don't. So here's the instructions, especially if you're a student, go ahead and check this out. You're gonna take this radius from this circle, and it doesn't matter which circle you start with, and you're gonna bend it so that the curvature matches the curvature of your circle there. So I'm gonna go right here, and I'm just gonna draw a line where it meets. And with a marker, it can be real easy to draw too thick of a line. I don't want to do that because um, then your circle gets, your, your radians get marked off or your what we're doing here gets all messed up. I want to be as exact as I can. Now, that's just one radius wrapped around the circle. That's where it lands. And really, if I draw a line going back, it's, it's what a radian is. But we're going to get to that in a moment. That's getting ahead of ourselves. What I want you to do for now is take this radius and go all the way around the circle. So line it up again. And basically, we're just measuring out and seeing how many times can this radius wrap around the circle. Now, I want you to take a look at this. And after you mark the second one, take a guess at how many radians can you fit into one circle, wrapping it around there and then continue on and see if you were right. So looking at this, I've got one, two, three so far, and notice I'm not quite halfway around the circle. I'm gonna keep doing this, going around the circle and making a mark. Be careful not to, you know, like I said, don't let the thickness of your mark there mess up, mess up your measurement, because we wanna be as precise as we can. It might actually work better for you to use like a mechanical pencil but for it to show up on the video, I think it's easier if I use this marker here. Sometimes you gotta mess with your wire or your ribbon, whatever you're doing, to get it to go just right. And as we can see, we're gonna stop right there, just a little bit shy of a complete circle. And for a lot of my students, that always bothers them because they want it to be a perfect fit. And it would make a lot of our math sometimes easier if it wrapped around a perfect amount of times, but it doesn't. So now that I've got all of those done, what I'm going to do now is take my ruler and I'm going to, at each one of those tick marks, draw a line going back from there to the center of my circle. And so all of these are equally spaced out, aren't they? Except for this last pizza slice we're going to get right here.
All right, I'm headed somewhere with this, but what I want you to do now is you should have two other circles to complete. So go ahead and do those other two circles, the exact same thing that we just did right here. All right, once you've finished that with all three circles, you should have something that looks like this. This is the larger circle and then the two smaller circles. You can hold these up to the light and see how they overlap one another. What I'm gonna do is cut them out real quickly. So there it is cut out, and there it is with my mess cleaned up. And before we go any further with it, I do wanna take a look and just talk about what an actual radian is. So we've done all this work, and we said earlier, I mentioned briefly that a radian is when we take this radius and we wrap it around the circle. And that arc length around the circle we draw a line back, this angle is one radian, or one radius wrapped around the circle. If I wrap the radius around twice, I have two radians. If I wrap it around three times, this is three radians, then four radians, five radians, and six radians. And then I like to ask my students, what percentage or what um, decimal or fraction of a radius do you think I have left over here? And usually, you know, when we're thinking about we've got one radian, two radians, three radians, four radians, five, six, and somebody would say, wait a minute, that's 0.28. And there's a reason for that, or approximately 0.28. If we think about half a circle, or, or actually just think about what a circumference is, we're basically marking out the circumference. The equation for circumference is two times pi times the radius. That is the distance around the circle. You know what the radius is. You multiply it by 2 and multiply it by pi. So if I take 2 times pi, pi is approximately 3.14, right? If I multiply it by 2, I get 6.28 times the radius. So the circumference of a circle is 6.28 radii, right? And that's exactly what I just marked out right here. This should be close to one-third of my radius. Now some of these might be just a little bit off because I am using a wire here and there is some human error, but that's what it should be working out to be. So a radian is that radius wrapped around. It's measuring it in arc length. Usually when we talk about degrees, everybody loves degrees because that's what you first learn to measure an angle with. And with a degree, we're saying, okay, here is an initial side of an angle here is my terminal side, and as I spin this around, I'm measuring a degree of rotation. You know, how many, you know, it's just arbitrarily picked. We take a circle and divide it up into 360 parts, and how many of those parts am I rotating through? That's what a degree is. But a radian becomes more useful because instead of measuring through the unit's degrees, we can now measure it in whatever the unit of the radius is, whether it be feet or miles or whatever, we can say it's so many radians and we know it's representing um, a linear distance, if you will. So this is the arc length wrapped around. And then the reason why I had you do these other two circles is because you say, well, if the radius is larger here than one of the other circles, would that change the angle? So let's look at our medium circle and I'm gonna line up that originally drawn line with this one and notice when we match them up, and remember, there is a little bit of error there if my, if my marks are just a little bit off, but they're pretty darn close. And I bet if I was measuring this out on a computer, it would be exact. And then here's our smallest circle coming in right here. Match up the center there. And notice it doesn't matter the size of my circle. A one radian is the same on every circle out there because as the circle shrinks, so does the radius. And as the circle gets larger, so does the radius. And so that arc length changes proportionally, making the angles the same. Another great way to show radians on a circle is to take a popcorn lid. These popcorn lids we usually find around the holidays. And this one's so shiny, I can't put it underneath the document camera. It's going to just shine. You'll see just a big old glare coming back at you. Um, but you take a popcorn lid, you can draw a Y and an X axis if you want, or just a cross there. And, and I'm making this unit one. So if you can see it, I got 0.5 marked and it's marked off into tenths just so we can use it for other things in class. So this is especially helpful for teachers. And 
I drilled another hole here on the side coming out right here and this is this is oriented the right way this is the x-axis if you want to think about this as the origin you don't have to but I, I drilled a hole right here and I tied a shoestring on the inside of it so you can see that there is a shoestring tied in right there at that hole comes out right here and around on the edge I took some velcro and I pasted it on the edge and then on the shoestring this is a wide shoestring I marked out the radius going all the way around it. So if you look, I pull this back, that is one radii, and it's marked a little bit. It needs to be remarked. It's starting to fade. So I can wrap this around and say, boom, that's one radius wrapped, and I can draw it back and say, here is one radii marked out. If I continue to the second mark, this is the second radius being marked out. That is two radians. Right here is three. And if you notice three, if I pull it back, is just shy of going halfway around the circle. Because, remember, half a circle is going to be half of the circumference. So a full circumference is 2 pi r. This is going to be 1 pi times the radius. And then if we continue on, we've got the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. And I'm going to be just about 0.28 shy of a radian of a full circle there. Okay, so that's basically the exact same thing we just did on paper, but I'm telling you as a teacher, if you make something like this, it's extremely useful as we get into different topics of trigonometry because we can quickly pull this up and have discussions in class on this. If you're a student, it's not a bad thing to make either. You can make it with um, any popcorn tin that's round here, um, and it's, it's a quick make. Two drill holes, a little bit of Velcro, and some shoestrings, and you've got a nice... Um, manipulative that you can have for trigonometry. Now, that being said, it's probably not very useful to just talk about radians and say, I've got an angle of one radian or two radians, because it's very rare that we actually talk about that. The only time I can think about, I'm talking about whole number radians, is when I'm saying convert this to degrees, or convert degrees back to radians. It's very rare I've got a triangle and say, an angle in it is three radians um, and asking something else. Usually, and if you're here to learn what a radian is, you're probably a little bit into the class already and you're thinking, you, you see pi radians, three pi over four radians, 11 pi over six radians. It's always pi thrown in there. So although this is one radian, typically we, we're using pi somewhere when we're discussing radians. And there's a reason for that. The reason is a full circle is two pi radians and half a circle is pi radians. Now, that discussion I want to say for another video. Today, my goal was for you to just understand that a radian is an arc length wrapped around a circle and that's how we're measuring at an angle. I want you to also understand that it doesn't matter how big the circle, radian, one radian equals one radian. And then when we discuss about pi radians or two pi radians or three pi over two radians, whatever we're discussing there, it's the same on every single circle because as the circle grows, so does the radius, okay? I hope that cleared up for you what a radian is. Maybe it gave you some ideas if you're a teacher to um, have some hands-on material in class to help you teach it. If you have any questions, let me know and be sure to watch my next video where we'll actually start talking about the unit circle or at least developing those common angles and seeing some pi throw into our radian measure. All right, hope you're having a great day and thanks for watching.